first we want to start with the CEO of TikTok testifying before the House Committee on Energy and Commerce today. Yeah, all eyes were on this. Several lawmakers underscored their concerns with the threat TikTok's ties to China pose to U.S. national security. You're trying to give the impression that you're a good actor, but the commitments that we would seek uh, to achieve those goals are not being made today. You damn well know that you cannot protect the data and security of this committee or the 150 million users of your app because it is an extension of the CCP. I don't believe that TikTok has, uh, that you have said or done anything to convince us that uh, that, that um, information, the personal information of 150 million Americans uh, that the Chinese government is not going to give that up. The head of TikTok made commitments to address issues that have been raised about his company, but he also said these concerns are not exclusively TikTok's responsibility to tackle. Potential security, privacy, content manipulation concerns raised about TikTok are really not unique to us. The same issues apply to other companies. We believe what's needed are clear, transparent rules that apply broadly to all tech companies. Ownership is not at the core of addressing these concerns. Joining us now from Capitol Hill is CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane. Scott, really some fireworks coming from the Republicans on that committee, but Chu does have a point when it comes to um, security measures, even US-based social media websites, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, have been um, criticized for the information they gather and collect. So what, what do we make of what Chu said? And did he really convince any of the lawmakers that he's taking appropriate measures to protect data? Hey, Errol and Meg, there are uphill climbs, and then there are uphill fights. Then there's whatever version of uphill TikTok is facing at this moment in this place. When the chairwoman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee walked into the hearing room to hear from the TikTok CEO, she said there should be a national ban on TikTok. And there are now members of both parties who have grave concerns about TikTok continuing to operate in the U.S. So as you mentioned, Errol, yes, the TikTok CEO has argued and the company has argued for some time now that they're being singled out or unfairly scrutinized. And what the CEO promised during the first two hours of this hearing is that they will make priority again safety of teenagers and make priority again building that firewall to prevent Americans' data from going to foreign actors. That being said, this committee has been unequivocal that they don't take TikTok at its word at this moment, that they have been misrepresenting or misstating their efforts in the past. And one of the things that's cutting against Sho Chu in this hearing room today is he's arguing that they're going to make it a priority to keep TikTok free and accessible for its 150 million people <laughs> that use TikTok nationwide and worldwide. But that's the thing. Congress is so deeply concerned about TikTok because it has 150 million users and Congress simply doesn't trust it. Scott, let's talk about uh, a recent CBS News poll that just came out. It shows that more than half of Americans see TikTok as a national security risk. It also shows close to two-thirds of Americans support banning TikTok from the U.S. So there's a debate over First Amendment rights. So how are lawmakers seeking to address national security concerns without violating First Amendment. This issue singularly transcends party at this moment, Meg, and very few things here in Congress do transcend party in 2023. That poll is striking. So is another from our CBS News polling unit in which Americans were asked if they would support a ban on TikTok, a death sentence in America for TikTok. And the numbers change and evolve based on the age bracket of the respondents. That's not a surprise. Younger people, less supportive of a full ban on TikTok. Older people, as you get older and older, are more supportive of a ban on TikTok. But these numbers, even at the lowest level, are striking because policymakers read polls. Policymakers understand polls. And there are now members of Congress in powerful perches of both parties who are talking about legislation or regulations to stiffen the rules on TikTok. This is why I call it a particularly uphill moment in Congress for the CEO.
Yeah, the younger the respondent to the CBS News polling, the less likely they wanted an app they use for entertainment and information to be banned. You know, Scott, what I found interesting is this is the first time we're really seeing TikTok CEO in person, certainly on Capitol Hill. Uh, this is just one committee, though. So what happens next? Well, there'll be more scrutiny for this CEO. There'll be more committees that want a piece of this. The CEO, Cho Chu, has also met with members of this House Energy and Commerce Committee before today's hearing, trying to maybe soften the ground a bit. There's a political reality, though. At the end of the day, if it is up to the Biden administration to sign legislation to ban TikTok, it's not without political consequence. Those poll numbers show you there are young Americans, there are potentially any number of young Democrats who may count that against a president who signs a TikTok ban. So it's not absent of politics, even so, even though some of this is blurred politically here in Congress. But I'll, I'll paint a picture for you, Megan Errol. Not only is the CEO of TikTok here today, so too are many interest groups lobbying, including moms against TikTok <laughs> and young influencers for TikTok. <laughs> and they want to have their voices heard. And we'll see what Congress hears from them after they're done with the CEO. All right, Scott McFarlane on Capitol Hill for us. Thank you so much. Thanks, Scott.